All right, I want an apology from every single one of you who claim this show was the best video game adaptation of all time, and this guy just hates everything. I can't believe he'd assume that a video game adaptation would be bad. And what do you know, it only took three episodes for this thing to jump the shark. Holy crap, I am blown away by the lack of restraint by HBO. Subtlety is truly dead. I'm serious, by the way. I want to see at least one comment say Synthetic Man was right. So really quick, I will cover this briefly for those of you who don't know what's going on. Basically, episode 3 of The Last of Us is Brokeback Mountain. You think I'm joking? I'm not, dude. If you remember Bill from the original game, which most people probably do if you played it, it was a pretty memorable part. Instead of Joel and Ellie working their way through the town, avoiding his traps, teaming up with him, fighting your way through a horde of infected, encountering the bloater for the first time, and eventually discovering that Bill's partner had gotten infected and committed Sudoku, all of that was cut out of the TV show version, and instead, we got 50 minutes of two middle-aged gay dudes falling in love, and there's an extended kissing scene, and they even get married, and it is just the weirdest, bizarre, out-of-left-field shit that is completely irrelevant to the overall plot. And before one of you morons comments, well, Bill was gay in the game, what the hell does that have to do with any of this? This is not what happened in the game, it's not even fucking close. I can't believe that they're trying to subject mainstream audiences to this. I know we live in clown world, it's pretty much undeniable if you have even a shred of sanity left, which seems to be increasingly rare these days. But the writers of this show, including Neil Druckmann himself, who's been credited on every episode so far, have to know that they're pushing a little bit too hard on this stuff. I'm gonna give you a hard truth right here and you can give me as many dislikes as you want, but the reality is the vast majority of people do not want to see two hairy men kissing. It's already incredibly implausible that Bill would seal off this entire town and all of a sudden one survivor comes along and he just happens to be gay as well and they basically live out the first five minutes of Up but gay in a zombie apocalypse. I don't care if this episode made you cry. It's fucking stupid. At least Bill in the game was kinda cool and then at the end it turned out he was gay and it was revealed in admittedly a pretty funny moment. Oh, I'm sure your friend will be missing this tonight. Mm -hmm. It's light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How, how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh, why are these all stuck together? Bill was on the very short list of actually well-written gay characters in video games alongside Arcade Ganon from Fallout New Vegas and probably one or two others, trust me, it's difficult to think of any gay characters from games that don't just immediately shout out their sexuality in their first scene. And now look what they've done. In modern woke culture, subtlety is dead. The audience has to be told immediately why we should care about a white man because we're all supposed to hate straight white men, but this guy's gay, so he's all right. It almost feels like a waste of time to tell you the differences here between the game and the show when they're evident if you played the game. Nothing is similar at all. The town is completely safe. There's no zombies around because everyone got evacuated from the town near the start of the outbreak, but Bill stayed behind being a doomsday prepper. And so for nearly 20 years, Bill and Frank are just chilling by themselves, doing basically nothing except trade for whatever goods they need from Joel and Tess. There's very little I can even comment on here without going for low-hanging fruit jokes about AIDS or monkeypox or bowel parasites, incontinence. And, well, you know, I'd like to keep my monetization on YouTube, thank you very much. And this whole prolonged sequence ends with Frank dying of, well, presumably AIDS, but also possibly cancer. And so the duo gets married, and Bill helps Frank commit assisted self-deletion, 
But what a twist, Bill also deletes himself at the same time. They both drank from the poison chalice and die peacefully in each other's arms in their bedroom. And man, I am really struggling to come up with anything I even want to discuss related to this huge section of the episode. It is quite literally the majority of the episode. And giving you yet another synopsis of the scenes would just be a complete waste of time. This is filler, shonen anime tier filler to appease the virtue signaling freaks on Twitter. That's the only reason this exists. It's not even like it was poorly acted or poorly written. No, I think Nick Offerman did a good job and I never really watched Parks and Rec and I didn't keep up with any of the Ron Swanson memes, but still obviously I recognize it. So it was kind of weird to see him take a gay role. Yes, I know he's a liberal in real life, but that doesn't really matter. The point is he's not gay. Or maybe he's yet another closeted Hollywood gay, I don't fucking know. The point is, I didn't sign up for this. If I wanted to watch a gay romance story, I would have just watched a gay romance story, and trust me, there's multiple gay romance stories on streaming services, I know because my mother watches them. This is a show about The Last of Us, it's a zombie apocalypse story. And yes, the human condition, and love, and hate, and just mankind's potential in general for great good and great evil is obviously a prevailing theme in all apocalypse stories. This is still bullshit because it has nothing to do with the apocalypse. They were basically living on a private island while the rest of the world was destroyed. The only outside contact they had with the world was Joel and Tess. So this is as disconnected as it could possibly be from the overall story, and it wasn't faithful to the game. Honestly, on some level, I can't even get mad about this, because it's funny in like some kind of let's all accelerate the destruction of Western society type of way, you know? I absolutely guarantee you there's going to be a significant drop-off in viewership after this episode. Now, of course, will we ever know for certain? Probably not, because these streaming services always just put out numbers with no evidence. So it's going to take somebody from the inside or some kind of hacker, or maybe there's some other way to trace viewership. I don't really know, but there's no way anybody's going to want to keep watching this show after being duped into watching Brokeback Mountain in the apocalypse. I mean, come on! If you were still curious as to what Joel and Ellie were doing this episode, they only show up at the very beginning and the very end. It starts off with Ellie being a bitch again, basically telling Joel not to blame her for Tess dying because they made their own choices trying to escort her. And while she's technically not wrong, why the hell is she being such a sociopath? I mean, seriously? Are they trying to get us to hate this character on top of being a gross miscast? But anyway, eventually they come across a rest stop. Joel has some supplies hidden in there. You ever play this one? I had a friend who knew everything about this game. There's this one character named Melina who takes off her mask and she has monster teeth and then she swallows you whole and barfs out your bones. Uh. And Ellie wanders into the back, finds a secret basement room that apparently Joel and Tess never found, I guess. And there's an infected down there, but it's trapped under rubble, and she just stabs it and puts it out of its misery. Not really sure what the point of that was. And then, for a very stupid reason, Joel decides to stash his M4, saying that the ammo would be hard to find. <laughs> Look, I understand these Hollywood writers think everyone is left wing and knows absolutely nothing about guns, but 5.56 is like the most common ammo type in the United States. Anything that takes 9mm or 5.56 or 12 gauge would be something you'd probably carry on you if you could afford to at all times. Because if you find a place that hasn't been obviously picked clean, chances are you're going to find one of those three ammo types. Not to mention, in this apocalypse scenario, we already know they can manufacture more bullets, so it's not a finite supply across the entire world. Even if he'd said that he needed to travel extra light because they'd have to travel a really far distance, it would still be a bad excuse given that thing is probably 8 to 10 pounds at the most. And look, I already know some people are going to say this is nitpicking. 
but for me it's important because it just completely takes me out of the experience. Especially because I know where the story goes from here. They're gonna fight not just hundreds of infected, but also at least dozens of survivors on their way across the country. It'd be nice to have a bigger gun. So anyway, in the next scene, Joel explains to Ellie how the world got infected in the first place, which they already told the audience last episode. And then we get our super long, completely pointless filler plot. And right at the end of the episode, we get back to Joel and Ellie again, as they finally make their way to Bill and Frank's house. See that they are nowhere to be found. Ellie finds a letter from Frank to Joel and tells him not to open the bedroom upstairs. And Frank gives Joel all of his various weapons, which is about to be another stupid point in the episode. And the letter is supposed to be an emotional message about how Bill was a super doomer, paranoid schizo who found love in the apocalypse. And so he wants Joel to protect his love, Tess. And of course, Tess is already dead. So Joel goes to their garage, finds a truck, and then he lays down some ground rules for Ellie, which I seem to vaguely remember also being in the game. Basically just telling her, don't talk about Tess and do whatever I tell you to do. And if she agrees, he will continue to take her to the Fireflies, with the next stop being where his brother Tommy is located, as he used to be a Firefly. Ellie agrees, and they go down into Bill's bunker, see an entire wall of guns, and no doubt, plenty of ammo. And of course, they don't fucking take any of it. This is stupid, dude. They literally have a truck now. They don't even have to carry the shit. There's no excuse for this. I don't care what you write, it's wrong. Whatever reasoning you come up with is incorrect. Of course, it doesn't really matter anyway, because Ellie finds a gun hidden in a drawer and stashes it for later, and I'm pretty sure I know what scene that's building up to. As a side note, we also find out the origin of the radio signal, and of course the reason it was broadcasting trouble is because no one actually changed the music playing on the station for more than two weeks, because obviously Bill and Frank have been dead for more than two weeks. And so the episode ends with Joel and Ellie traveling in the truck, we get another somewhat classic scene from the game, except without the comedic reveal that Bill was gay through the lewd magazine. As obviously that would be completely pointless, considering it was beaten into our skull for nearly an hour straight. And yeah, that's the end of the episode, and I don't think I even need to tell you what I think. Obviously I hated it, I'm sure most of my audience hated it. As for Redditors, I'm sure plenty of them will pretend that they absolutely loved it. It was great needed representation, a super improvement on the game, better in every way, a masterpiece of television. And you wonder why I don't take my enemies seriously. And I don't care if you think it's cringe that I call them my enemies because they quite literally hate watch my videos and dislike bomb them. What else do you want me to call them? So I guess the question is, why did this episode turn out this way? Well, a couple reasons. One, Neil Druckmann is intent on destroying the one good game that he was actually involved in. Now, as many others have said, Bruce Straley was reining him in on the original production of The Last of Us, and I have no doubt that it was Bruce who made that game as great as it was, in spite of Neil Druckmann. As ever since both he and Amy Hennig left Naughty Dog, they've been a shadow of their former selves. I don't care if you liked Uncharted 4, it was still full of cringe, alright? And obviously I don't think I need to talk about The Last of Us Part 2. So yeah, I'm not even sure I want to still cover this shit. Doing it episode by episode really doesn't leave me with enough material to talk about for 20 minutes, let's be honest. I could stretch it out, get into every little detail in my synopses, but it's garbage tier content. You know it, I know it. And for one reason or another, my first two episodes didn't get a crazy amount of views, especially not the second one. So I guess I'll have to see if you guys care to see this. The only reason I covered this episode is because it was so off the rails that I had to say something. I was supposed to be taking a break because the Dead Space remake really did not inspire me to make a review. It was simultaneously not good enough nor bad enough for me to have anything interesting to say. To give my very brief thoughts on it in case you didn't watch the streams or didn't read the community post, I think they improved a lot of gameplay elements, the combat being faster like Dead Space 2 and 
and the weapon rebalance changes are great. Changing those two kind of shitty turret segments and making them more engaging was a good idea. Completely changing the layouts of a bunch of rooms and changing up some of the objectives, some of the new story details, all of that stuff was good. But like I said in the community post, the devil is in the details. I really think they fucked up a lot of the horror elements here. Part of that was the necromorph designs look less human, which really takes away that uncanny valley factor. A lot of the animations look jank and cheap. I mean, when a game from 2008 has more fluid animations than a modern AAA release, you know something's fucked up. A lot of the sound effects weren't nearly as satisfying either. Honestly, they could have just ripped the original ones. I would have been completely fine with that. These new ones sound way too muted, especially the plasma cutter, which used to sound and feel great, and now it's been nerfed to almost being as bad as the pulse rifle of all things. And then, of course, there's the wokeness thing, which I've talked about at length, and of course, people were spurging out about it, even though it's obvious to anyone paying any amount of fucking attention. So just one last time, I'll go over these wokeness changes, if you're curious. One, the Hellion crew has been diversified, notably one now being a black woman. Now, ultimately, it doesn't really matter considering she dies in the first 30 minutes, but for some reason, the devs thought that was a good change. The most notable one, the one you've likely seen, is the all-gender bathroom. Not unisex bathroom, the all-gender bathroom. Of course, I can't forget the obvious one, that Nicole looks 50 now, probably twice the age she was intended to be in the original, and yes, I know, they modeled her after the voice actress, much like how Isaac Clark now looks like Gunnar Wright, who vaguely looks like Adam Sandler. But that's just laziness. I hate this trend of modeling video game characters after the actor because they just want to take the cheap route with this motion capture technology. This is not what these characters is supposed to look like. This is just distracting. Another big one is the poster art that is all over the Ishimura. In the original, it was generally a mixture of white and Asian people on the posters. I mean, the ship obviously has a Japanese name, so it made sense to have a lot of Asians. But in the new version, a very large number of them have been blackwashed, and I mean specifically blackwashed. It's funny, they even race swapped Dr. Kine from white to, I'm assuming, Middle Eastern. I don't know, he's brown. And I'm assuming they did this because Dr. Mercer, the guy who makes the Hunter, aka the Regenerator, is Middle Eastern, so I guess it would be bad optics if the evil doctor was brown and the good doctor was white. And look, I already know the people who hate somebody like me are going to ask, well, why does any of this matter? You're just nitpicking. You're just looking to make it political. Well, if it doesn't matter, then why did they change it? They changed it to, quote unquote, add representation, and that does matter. Unless you're gonna come out and say you don't think representation matters, but no, you know it does, which is why you're pushing for this. Which absolutely fucking disgusts me and pisses me off because this is a remake. You're shitting on someone else's vision. You people didn't make this. This is not Visceral making this remake, it's Motive. And then you have some of the more debatable stuff, like the hydroponics chick surviving for some reason with no weapons, by the way. You have the twist being completely butchered, which I won't spoil just in case you didn't play the game. But let's just say the way they handled Nicole was incredibly cringe. And again, if you're one of the people who doesn't care about any of this, apparently I'm the guy making things political and I'm making mountains out of molehills because at the end of the day, it's a fun game. And look, that's exactly why I didn't make the video, actually, is because at the end of the day, Dead Space is still fun. It's just the problem is it's fun because the original game was fun. They didn't make it all that much more fun. So the problem to me is that they only barely surpassed the minimum standards of what I would expect for a remake. Now unfortunately, given the nature of modern remakes that makes it one of the best game remakes, I don't know what it is about video game remakes and either being completely unnecessary or shitting on the original, but it seems to happen a lot. So at the end of the day, you're free to buy the game, I bought the game, I don't regret my purchase, 
but it certainly isn't as good as it should have been. I can see the potential there for it being an improvement on the original, but I have so many various minor issues that it's just not quite there. But it wasn't really worth reviewing because I think most people will probably enjoy it and just ignore the woke shit because everyone's fucking brainwashed anyway, so what's the point in trying to wake them up? Let's just accelerate till society collapses. I think that's, that's a good idea at this point. They should have had like 10 trans women and trans men in that game. I mean, why not, right? I'm just going to end it there. See you next time, guys.